is good to be here. So let's begin this, this morning with our first hymn, number 98. you gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, 
and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament, uh, sorry, the Old Testament, yes, uh, reading is taken from Daniel uh, chapter 7. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. And has God. second reading is Revelation 1, it's New King James' version. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and forever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light to our path. Lord, be in our hearts and on our lips, that we may hear and proclaim his holy gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Be praise to you, O Christ. And I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please uh, sit down. Those of us who were traditionally brought up might miss Stir Up Sunday. Anyone remember that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, don't, I, don't, I think you don't have to be too decrepit to remember that. No. Uh, uh, it comes, of course, from the old collect for that Sunday, that Sunday before Advent. Uh, and although we've lost the old collect, it reappears, you'll see, as the prayer after the communion today. Uh, the thinking behind that change is that we end the Christian year not sort of staggering through the umpteenth Sunday after Trinity, as it were, uh, with the end in sight, uh, but with a time to celebrate and reflect on the reign of Christ in earth and heaven. So instead of ending that, the Christian year on an anticlimax, we now finish on a high point firmly focused on Jesus' own overriding message, that in him, the kingdom, the rule of God, is near now and will one day be entirely fulfilled on earth. Now obviously, though perhaps with different emphases, that's the ultimate message in all four Gospels. But it's made most explicit in John, and so we look there this morning on this last Sunday of the Church's year, to consider Christ the King. Yet, when we look at this picture of Christ in the reading, we see him a prisoner before Pilate, accused of falsely claiming to be a king, seen as a blasphemer by his own people, and now as a potentially dangerous rebel to the Romans, and about to be condemned for it. It seems a doubtful claim to anyone, including obviously Pilate, the Greek, which I didn't actually read like this, uh, the Greek actually reads, you're a king. Both times, Pilate asks. Jesus doesn't deny it, but he answers, my kingdom is not from this world, or my kingdom is not from here. Now, Jesus' answer is not one of political power, but a matter of being seen and heard and accepted as speaking and even as being the truth. Jesus' answer says, yes, I am a king, but not the kind you mean, not what you expect. And it's an answer that chimes in with all that the Gospel writers say about God's kingdom. Where God rules, our expectations are always turned upside down, yet God still undeniably rules, okay? So what do we understand by the idea of a king? What do we expect? I want to suggest just four of very many possibilities. One rather obvious, and three others that are suggested by one of the prayers for the monarch in the, the, the prayer book communion service. One of the first expectations of a king must surely be leadership, upfront leadership, that brings security and unity and identity to a people. In days of old, this must have meant 
literally leadership in battle. But at best, it always included the ability to inspire others and to lead by example. And yet, that Gospel reading, as we said, shows Jesus as a prisoner, soon to be tortured and crucified, more like total defeat than upfront up leadership. Yet it is exactly there on the cross that John's Gospel in particular shows Jesus as King. Every detail shows Jesus laying down his life rather than having it taken from him. And as John had come to believe, accepting death once for all, on behalf of all, and defeating it. And as we shall hear later in the service, Jesus put an end to death by dying for us. His kingship wins security not by open displays of power, but by service and self-sacrifice. So Jesus' leadership is an example for us to follow and shows us two of those surprising upside-down values of his kingdom that he taught about before. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. So leadership is perhaps the most obvious quality we'd look for in a king. But I think there are particular areas where you might expect to see this leadership. Particular results, if you like, for the king's subjects. And these are the four things that the prayer book, uh, prayer, that prayer from the prayer book uh, suggested to me. It asks that the monarch may have grace to do fully and properly what being a king or a queen requires. And in that way, I think it gives some clues about what we might expect from the monarch. It asks that the monarch may study to preserve the people committed to his or her charge in wealth, peace and godliness. So again, we see Christ doing this for his people, though not perhaps always as we first expect. So first, wealth. We all know that following Christ, accepting him as king, isn't a passport to great riches and possessions. In fact, in that inverted way of the kingdom, he actually said, blessed are the poor, yours is the kingdom of God. And he himself had little and lived in great simplicity. Yet we also know that in the end, wealth isn't in the possessions themselves, but in the satisfaction we hope they will bring. And this is what Christ offers in that different way. The satisfaction that can come from seeing that all we have, including the most ordinary things, as God's gifts. And also the satisfaction of well-being. That's one of the original meanings of the English word wealth, of growing wholeness, of body, mind and spirit. As in his company, we follow our Lord's example. So wealth, and then peace. Again, we know there's no guarantee of peace in the world around or in the things that happen to us. All kinds of disturbances continue. Some even come, some even come from following Christ. But Christ's kingship means we need not depend on circumstances for our peace. But difficult as it is so often to do, we can look beyond to Christ himself confident in his promise and gift of peace. So wealth and peace, and last, godliness. Here at least I think it's obvious that this is something from Christ, and in many ways it's the key to all the rest. As all that Jesus did, and especially on the cross, opens the way for us to enter into a renewed and closer relationship with God. We see his love and respond to it with our own. And this relationship must surely be where we ultimately find his gift of security. It's a relationship where we can live and grow 
in those kingdom gifts of wealth, peace and godliness, and where we are identified and united with all his people under the leadership of Christ in his kingdom. So we can begin to live here and now in his kingdom, which is not of this world, not from here. And we can look beyond the figure in the Gospel reading, humiliated and soon to suffer and die, to the one more often depicted in the epistles, in Hebrews for example, which speaks of Jesus who endured the cross and has taken his seat at the right hand of God. Or as we read in the epistle this morning, Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings, coming with the clouds, recognised and acknowledged by all. And so we come to this last Sunday of the Christian year, not downbeat with a, load of, with a note of ending, but celebrating Christ the King, whose kingdom is not of this world, leading naturally onto the Advent themes that will be coming. And so in some more words from our Revelation reading, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we stand and declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, earth of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. As children of the kingdom, let us make our prayers to the eternal God who loves us. We pray for your kingdom to come in the worldwide communities of those who believe in Jesus Christ. May our lives enthrone him. Spirit of the living God, may your kingdom come. We pray for your kingdom to come in the nations of our world and in their leadership. For God's values to take root and grow, for each person to be respected as a beloved child of God. Spirit of the living God, may your kingdom come. We pray for your kingdom to come in our homes and families, our neighbourhoods and places of work, in all thinking, 
all speaking and all action. Spirit of the living God, may your kingdom come. We pray for your kingdom to come in all hospitals and surgeries and in every place of pain and sadness. Spirit of the living God, may your kingdom come. We pray for your kingdom to come in the final stages of earthly life, in the journey through death and in the awakening to eternal life. Spirit of the living God, may your kingdom come. We thank you for making us and redeeming us, opening wide to us the gates of heaven. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. share Christ's peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We can convey that peace to one another. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own to be given. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed is the Lord forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have set upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make them the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Accept through him, your, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power, be yours for the heaven and earth. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we'll go with our last hymn, number 212. Thank you. 